a very good morning students now in the next five or six very short videos i am going to tell you about the how ultimately you are going to learn the astrology okay so these are just introductory or general classes before you actually go to the histology i mean say not histology be before you actually go to your osteology classes or demonstration on to the bone classes as you know that most of the gross anatomy we learn with the help of the dissection of cadavers or the dead body why we learn the gross anatomy with the help of the uh, cadaveric anatomy or cadaveric dissection the reason is that in the cadaver in dissection hall you see the relationship of the muscles nerves blood vessels ligaments and the structure of the joint very clearly and all this is structure especially the muscles the ligaments they are very closely applied to that of the bones okay the muscles are taking origin or the insertion onto the bones okay similarly the ligaments of the joints they are also attached to the bones okay so it is very important to learn the osteology or the bone part of the uh, i mean to say particular region before you actually go for the dissection okay for example in your first uh, i mean to say Uh, allotment of the regional anatomy of will be most of the institution will allot you the dissection of the upper limb so when you will go to the dissection for the upper limb in the dissection hall before that you should know about the bones of that region which are the muscles which are taking origin from a particular uh, bone and how this muscle is going and getting attached to the distal bone okay what are the joint crossed by this muscle what are the ligaments which are attached to this bones what are the nerves and vessels which are in relation to a particular bone that you should learn first and then only you can learn the dissection the what i mean to say that you cannot learn the gross anatomy or cadaveric anatomy in dissection hall without learning the bone first so it is very important to learn the bone first and then you learn the gross anatomy okay gross now since i am using the term osteology okay your classes of the bones or the osteology classes what you mean by the osteology osteology is the part of the gross anatomy and this deals with the studies of the bones okay we will learn about the bones in the osteology part now usually as i said that the osteology or the bones they are learned in a smaller group about 30 students okay and this 30 students they sit in a small class where the uh, teacher is teaching you the bones by keeping the bones in the hand and you should also hold the bone why you are learning a bone in the osteology class or the demonstration class on to the bones okay on to the bones now then the question comes that this skeleton is here you will learn all the bones in this way uh, of the skeleton not only of the upper limb after upper limb they may start with the lower limb so you will go to the osteology class or the demonstration class on to the lower limb to the skull to that of the thoracic region lumbar so part by part in various regional anatomy you will have to finish first the osteology or first the bones now as you are seeing this skeleton what is an skeleton a skeleton is made up of the bones and the cartilages which are present mostly at the ends of the bone here it is an skeleton where the various bones of the body are just articulated articulated means the artificial joints are made here with the help of the wires the nut and bolts and springs so as to present you the skeleton with the 
various bones and joints here okay various one for the teaching purpose for the teaching as you are looking at the skeleton naturally your i mean to say the question must be coming in your mind that there are so many bones which are present in a skeleton and they are of different shapes and size of the bones are there okay some bones are very short some bones are the long bones say for the thigh and hip and here is the bones of the head region okay then these are different shapes and sizes of the bone then there are the bones which are present okay in the central part there are the bones which are present in the upper limb and that of the lower limb so let us learn first how the bones of the skeleton are classified or how the skeleton itself is classified now the skeleton human skeleton is classified as the axial and appendicular skeleton axial means those bones which are close to that of the median plane by this time okay you must be knowing what is a median plane is that so all those bone which are very close to that of the median plane they are classified as the part of the axial skeleton and the bones which forms the limb say for example upper limb and lower limb including the shoulder and the pelvic girdle bones they are classified as the appendicular skeleton okay let us see the bones which are forming our axial skeleton which is close to the midline now this is the head the skeleton of the head which is made up of the 22 bones okay as such there are 206 bone in our body which may be little more or less one or two more or less depending on accessory bones which may be present in our skeleton that you will learn later okay but there are 206 bones are present and out of this about 80 bones they are present in axial skeleton and then the rest of 126 bone hmm, they are present in the uh, appendicular skeleton now which are the bones in axial skeleton i was telling you this the region of the head is made up of 22 bones where only one bone is mobile and that is the lower jaw rest of the other bones they are joined with each other and they are fixed okay they have no movement okay then there are the about 26 vertebral column bones are there these are the vertebrae they are 26 seven cervical 12 thoracic then five lumbar and sacral and coccygeal that's max the 26 bones are there then in the axial skeleton there are small bones also for example the ear ossicles which is the stapes incus and malleus uh, three in the right side and three on to the left side of the middle ear cavity they are there okay then in the appendicular skeleton which are about 100 and 26 bone you will see that 60 bones they are in the upper limb and 60 bones they are in the lower limbs are there this makes 120 bones and then there are uh, four bones that means clavicle and scapula on one side and clavicle and scapula on the other side that makes the four bone of the Hmm? shoulder girdle and there are two bones which are present into the pelvic girdle so there are so many bones which are present in both appendicular and that of the axial skeleton okay now this skeleton which you are seeing here is showing some colors here and why these colors are there now this is painted with the red color and the blue color and this red and blue color which are painted only on one side not on to the other side they ultimately show you the attachment of the muscles that means red color is for origin from where the muscle is taking origin and the blue color is its distal attachment okay which is called as the insertion so this blue and red colors they are given here for the attachment of muscle no color is given here for the attachment of the ligaments the blood vessels and nerves relationship is also not shown which your teacher will teach you for the individual bones individual bone thus the study of the bones is very important before you actually learn the stuff uh, about the gross anatomy of any region i hope that you have understood this short video about the 
very introductory lecture onto the skeleton. Thank you very much for watching this video.